The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up? It is time for Cowboys Storyline here, Wednesday, November 29th, the day before the Cowboys and Seattle Seahawks. Square off at AT&T Stadium. Cowboys looking to get to 9-3. and three. This is supposed to be the gauntlet part of the schedule for the Cowboys. Uh, and, you know, I think Seattle is is pretty good. Uh, they're, they're struggling a little bit. Um, they, they're they going through their own gauntlet of a schedule right now. Uh, probably worse than what the Cowboys will have. And when you think about San Francisco, then Dallas, then I think it's Philly then San Francisco, um, or, or maybe flipped around a little bit. But they, that's their, their four teams that they've got, a four-game stretch. So they uh, they definitely need this game. So I think it's going to be a really tough tough matchup. We'll talk about it here. Uh, we'll talk about, um, of course, Shaq Leonard, who was here yesterday. Uh, looks like he's going to be in Philly today. Uh, I'm not sure what other teams that, that are kind of you know on the horizon for him, if, if any. Um, but... Yeah, it comes down to Dallas and Phil. I mean, he's obviously he's been with the Colts for a few years now, and and looking to go to a team that that's going to have a chance to compete. And you know, I don't think it's, you know, I, I don't think it's a co- coincidence that these are the two teams that that he's looking at. But they also need some linebacker help. Both of them have had injuries at linebacker, so it kind of makes sense for a couple of reasons. All right, eight eight eight. 855-2297 is the number to call. You can text in um, some questions at 817-290-3298. Uh, we'll go right to it. We don't have time to waste here. So let's let's start it off. Irene in Virginia. What's up, Irene? Hey, Nick. Hey, Chris. Um, hey. Okay. So shout out to Deron Bland. Um, so we eat late here at my house, and both of my brothers, I was in a different room finishing up <laughs> some cooking and watching mm-hmm. the game. And they both thought I had been stabbed because apparently I made such a guttural reaction to <laughs> his pick. And then I and then I started laughing when he because I was like, "No, it's not going to happen." I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so that was awesome. I had it. I had an outburst in the 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 uh, press box. You're not supposed to have. You're not supposed to do that. And I went to talk to. Patrick and Nick kind of walked over, said, "All right, what, what are we thinking? You know, what are they? You know," and then the interception happened, and I was like, "No, freaking way!" Maybe a different word, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Maybe a different word, and I, I was like, "Same thing. He's gonna get tackled. He's gonna." Get, and then I was like, "I couldn't believe it. I really could not believe that one. That one was un, unreal." But yeah, the perfect way to break history. Definitely, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to be facetious with this question. When did this Detroit stop hosting a Thanksgiving game? Because how come I – went, I went back and looked. How come they are never the team that has to play the following Thursday? I mean, I get it if they don't want a, the advantage for both of those teams and they rotate every year, but why is it always Dallas? They've, I yeah. looked back and I think it only was one year, and that was last year, that yeah. they didn't play on the following Thursday. I don't get it. Just what? Like Detroit – well, I mean, I um, have you ever been on Lion Storyline? Which would be cool. It would be called Story Lion, maybe. That would be cool. Or the Lions mm-hmm. break. Uh, I'm not saying they don't have that. They're not the Cowboys. And, and you know this. And I mean, your answer is exactly, you, you know the answer. They're not the Cowboys. That's why they're not on prime time. I mean, there's probably been times over the years where they were like, do we have to? Why does Detroit have to have a Thanksgiving game? I guarantee you, networks have okay. thought this. Um, and it's just the way that it is. So I don't think they're going to put it, give them another one. They're still the Lions. Not to say they're not good. They're, they are a good team. Dan Campbell, big shout out to them. But I, it just comes down to Thursday night games and 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 just you know when do you want to put the Cowboys on prime time? And you know, yeah. I, I I don't think it's that you know it's that big a deal honestly. I mean because. You're gonna get that time anyways. I mean, you know, they're gonna get it after the this game, leading into the Eagles. So it's probably. I think it works out pretty good this year. I do too. I, this year I do. But I'm like, well, everyone needs a Thursday night game, so I can't get rich. That's that's fine. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I know the Shaq Leonard story isn't quite over, but I was feeling pretty down about it yesterday, and I'm in line at Aldi, and I was like, let me just ask this cashier 
uh, what fan base, or if he likes football. Because I was hoping he would be a Cowboys fan so we could kind of commiserate. And then he told me he was a Panthers fan, and I realized, you know, we have it pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, you yeah. could be a Panthers fan. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that, that changed my perspective real quick. I still hope we sign him. Yeah. I really dislike the idea of the Eagles signing him. Right. So, but, you know, it All is right. what it is. We're in good shape regardless. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks for the call. Appreciate that. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I have thoughts on that as well. I, um, I just said, I do a, a, a quick hit on Wednesdays on the fan here, 105.3, the fan. So if you listen to that, I'll tell you the same thing, but you know, I, I look at it more like the Cowboys sort of playing defense on this, which is fine. Cause Shaq Leonard does play defense, but you know, it kind of reminds you, you know, I have a, I have a three-year-old daughter and, she doesn't always want to play with the toys all the time unless somebody else comes over and wants to play with the toy. Then it's like, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. You, That's not yours. This is mine. You know, um, you don't play with that. I think it's more of that, like, that. nobody wants Philadelphia to sign this guy. I mean, like, if he goes and signs with the Ravens, you'd be like, well, you know, he could have helped us to, you know. But if he signs with Philly, that's going to be even worse. And so that's, I get that. Um the sense that I got yesterday by talking to a couple of people was that the Cowboys would like to sign him. If it doesn't happen, they'll be okay uh, because they understand. I mean, this is not the same guy. This is not Darius Leonard, who was that was his name when he came into the league, and he was really great and all that. And now he changed his name to Shaq Leonard, which is his middle name. But um, but he's he's not been the same. It has nothing to do with the name. It's just he hasn't been the same player um, for injuries, things like that. So the the Cowboys see that. I mean, teams see that. They know the Colts saw it. I mean, you have to figure out why he was out there. So they they've done that. But then again, he can still be a good run stopper and at linebacker. That's what this team needs. And he if he can come in and stop the run, it helps your pass rush because guess who gets to play. Less linebacker and more pass rush, Micah Parsons. So it can help. It's a it's a position of need, and it just so happens to be a position of need for the Eagles as well. All right, uh, Dylan, Northport, Florida. What's up, Dylan? Hey, Nick. Hey, Irene. Hi. Nice to follow you up there, Miss Irene. Hey, uh, we follow each other on Twitter, so we cool. we. Uh, I like yeah, this building the community here. Connecting people. I, I love it. I love it. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny she uh, talked about Jerome. That's where I was going to call to was uh, Jerome Bland. And speaking of our reactions, right, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I hurt myself. I was playing with my kids, and I tried doing the little Jerome Bland roll pop-up thing, right, and I hurt my shoulder doing that. And then You did that? Week, gets... you, you were the one that did that? Got yeah, hurt. that's me, man. That's me. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I sent you a tweet. I must you, have seen a that's tweet. right. That's right. You did. I maybe I didn't. I didn't. I don't know what your name is on Twitter, but maybe I just didn't think that that was the same one. I apologize. But yeah, I saw that on Twitter, and I was like, oh man, somebody got hurt doing that because we, we said, hey, do it in your living room, roll and see how quick you pop up. <laughs> no. no, I was playing with my kids, and it popped in my mind to to try it out. So, but it didn't work. And you're right. There's a reason why they're where they are, and I'm yeah. not. So you're right. <laughs> And then uh, last week when he, you know, he breaks the record, I'm, I'm up, I'm running around my house, and I toss my four-year-old, four-year-old up in the air. I catch her, I run, I hug my wife in the other room. She doesn't know what the hell's going on. I run back, sit down on the couch, and my back starts tightening up. I had to sit there for 30 minutes. I couldn't move. I couldn't move. But you are it's worth it. So you are not. <laughs> so now we know you're not an NFL cornerback. We know yep, this. Yep, all those dreams are crushed. Got it. I was barely a high school cornerback. So, well, it um, sounds like you tried your own pick six there. You know, uh, with with your with your kid picked up and, and ran into the end zone. <laughs> Probably heavier than the yeah, football. Yeah, yeah, so. no, that was pretty cool. Um, but yesterday, you were talking to Arthur about uh, you know him being the defensive player of the year, and you know is he the best player on the defense and and all that. Well, uh, he's not the best player on the defense, but I think he's having the best season. Right, and he's having a historic season. I think that has to be considered. Every year, you know, the the award go seems to go to a pass rusher that gets you know the same thing that other pass rushers do every year: eighteen sacks, nineteen sacks. Not that that's not special; it's really good, obviously, but. Bland's doing something historic now, and it's not like some weird category. This is a meaningful mm -hmm. metric, right? He has a, a negative net touchdown count against him, meaning he's scored five touchdowns, given up one. So, like, quarterbacks are better off just throwing him in the dirt. Uh, I looked right. at the stats, and his QBR throwing at him is terrible. And so it's like he's he's leading in all these stats. He has history on his side. So if he doesn't win Defensive Player of the Year, then I'm, I don't know what the heck they're looking at. But Yeah. yeah. 
I, I agree. I mean, it's going it, it, to, and, and I've had to kind of come around a little bit on that. And, and I've said it yesterday how, you know, you, you're right. It's the defensive player of the year. It is what it is. That's what the award is. And he, and he is, like you said, historic. He's, he's doing something that, that we just have never seen anything close to, uh, especially from the Cowboys uh, perspective and then NFL as well. So yeah, he's, he's, um he's having an unbelievable year. I think Miles Garrett could could have pushed there. He was having a lot of sacks too. Um, didn't T.J. Watt win it last year? I mean, didn't he set the record or tie the record? I can't remember. I think he had like twenty two. Yeah, um, I think he. I want to say he tied it. He tied oh, straight hand. Yeah, um, but no one laid down in front of uh, T.J. Watt. I don't think like, like I'm with straight hand <laughs> now. Sorry. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I mean that's. I'm not. I'm not gonna fight this thing. I mean, I, if the voters vote for him. Um, the thing that might hurt him is that there's some people that still feel like Micah Parsons is in the running too. So maybe, you know, those guys they might split some votes a little bit. But yeah, that I mean, should be a co a co depoy for for the both of them. They can share it. It'll be, be crazy if Blaine gets it before Micah. Can you imagine that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be uh, crazy. And uh, Micah would would not like that. He said he'll say he will, but he won't like it. He won't like it. <laughs> so all hey, right, can I give you a score prediction real quick? Yeah, Nick? yep, throw it out there. All right, we'll we'll say uh, thirty four to. Uh, there's going to be a safety, so we'll actually say thirty six to seventeen. That's my bold prediction. Thirty six for the Cowboys. Seventeen with the safety. Cool. You got it. All Thanks, right. Man. Have a good one. All right, let's go to some text questions here. Doug from Florida, we set a goal to fix some issues through the past three games, and I think we've addressed the run game. Cooks and Gallup are more involved in the red zone. Exception uh, is penalties. There's still an issue. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a that's a good point to throw that out there. I mean, um, I think I said that after the that was my article after Carolina was that you, you're seeing some things, some improved signs here. You know, some reasons to to be optimistic about things because you're seeing growth. You know, um, you're right about Cooks and Gallup. I mean, that they and and they are are making more plays. And I really don't see anything changing from CD's perspective. I mean, he's still making a lot of plays as well. Just adding to that, the running game looks solid. D- Dattles, you know, got he got more carries. He scored the touchdowns the last two games. Um, Pollard's running seemed to be running a little bit better. Uh, Schoonmaker's getting involved. Ferguson's been involved now, you know. So you just you just have more weapons. Jalen Tolbert's making some plays. So yeah, I, I I like that. I like what what we've seen. You're seeing growth on the offensive end. And, and penalties, yeah, penalties is still an issue. And, and it's one of those game to game type things. It's a crew to crew. If you listen to to Brian Broaddus a lot on on um you know on the on the fan, but he's also on Cowboys Breaking. You know he he talks about officials a lot. You know and and who. Who is the the crew for this game? And I, because it matters. I mean, you they they're pretty consistent. They call a lot of pass interference. They're going to call a lot of pass interference. So you have to know that. I know Mike McCarthy knows that, and so that that's important. And that's it. Kind of happens from crew to crew, and they you have to kind of coach that a little bit. You have to be aware of things that they that they call. They're gonna they're gonna call you for lining up you know, your hand on you know inside the the neutral zone. Make sure it's not in there. You know that one kills me i really don't understand how that happens all the time but it does all right sebastian in savannah georgia is our next caller sebastian what's up man good morning and happy hump day everybody happy hump day mr eatman oh it's wednesday uh, that's right it's wednesday yeah with the penalty thing it's rough i think the penalties happen to every team in the league we just got to stop those timely penalties not every team on third down sorry yeah well we're not talking about philly but we're, we, we just got to stop those timely penalties on third down yeah. Speaking of Philly, the big thing with Philly is that they're never out of the game. That team has zero quit. Yeah. No matter how far down they get, they have that we've been here before mentality, and they fight and fight and fight until they get back in the game. So if you are going to beat Philly, you got to keep your thumb on them and keep pressing. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the game this week, I've watched the last couple of games. So this is a far different team from the Russell Wilson, Marshawn Lynch era. This team cannot run the ball, and that's what Pete Carroll tends to want to do with his team. Mm-hmm. They're not a good running team. Yeah, they've averaged they average like eighty to ninety yards, but they're like on sixteen to twenty carries. Yeah, uh, they're not. And Geno Smith is, is very similar to Sam Howell. Like last week, I would think we would get out of this game with like a twenty-eight to seventeen. No, we're not going to be sitting in the fourth quarter this time around. I don't think because they're a better team than that. But I think we get out twenty-eight to seventeen. 
Uh, their biggest weapon is Tyler Lockett. I don't know what's going on with the big guy, uh, DJ, DK Metcalf. Right. It looks like he's not, he hasn't, he's kind of like what, what Dez was in later in his career, like right now, where Dez wasn't the best route runner. DK's not running great routes. He's not doing really much to help Geno. And Geno doesn't have a lot of time in the pocket. And against a team that rushes like we do, we should eat them kids up on the passing front. All right. You know, but I'll hang up and listen. I to like that. The, I day. like it. It's a good scouting report. Uh, good stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, they – you're right. And sometimes it's tough when, when you, you're you an older coach that, that you, you have a style that has worked in the past and that's the way you want to play, but it doesn't always work with your personnel. And I think that's that's the the sign of every – Great coach is is fitting, and I'm not saying Pete Carroll isn't. He's he certainly he's won everywhere he's been. But uh, you know, sometimes your personnel just doesn't fit for what you want to do, and 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 you you want to, you know, you want to push them that way. Yes, this Kenneth Walker can run the ball or Charbonnet or whatever they can run it. But if that's not really what they do best, then then it's always a struggle. And I think I think we've seen that here. We've seen that some some of the times with Kellen Moore. We've seen it early on here with Mike McCarthy. Is that you have a certain style, but you're still trying to figure out your team, and it changes, you know, year to year, and it changes throughout the year sometimes as well. Good call um, there for Sebastian. All right, let's go. We have another question on the text line. This is John in Michigan. He'd love to hear more about how the data folks are affecting the team this year. Have they contributed to the offense or special teams in any way you can see uh, in the building or in the discussions with the coaches? I'm sure they have because they have a, a big analytics team. I think there's like five people, and there's a new director over there. Uh, I'd be lying if I'd said I knew all the things that they do this year to help with the offense and special teams. It's just not – that's not – it's a great question. It's just not one that I've really um, kind of gone into and, 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 and found that out. And, and that's not one that – when they do – Things like that. They don't sit there and parade it around for the media to hear and things like that because that's that's kind of – you want to have that edge. You want to figure things out. But, yeah, you wouldn't have a team of four to five people, especially when you had – zero like 10 years ago uh you would you know that's 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 developed that part is developed and and some coaches buy into it more than others i think mike mccarthy really does buy into it that's why they have such a strong team so yeah it, it, it matters I, I but i i don't really know specific things and if i did i don't know if they would be something to, th to throw out there all right uh let's go to pete in connecticut pete in connecticut what's up man hey how are you nick Hi, i'm great you Good. Um, I was just wondering, I know we had Shaq Leonard in for a visit yesterday and he left a uh, contract. And uh, do you think he's just going around trying to get more money out of Jerry Jones? And my second question was, how does our offensive line stack up against Seattle's? Thank you very much for taking my call. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the call. This is somebody that's called before, and if he hadn't called here a lot, he's called uh, radio, uh, you know, talk radio and stuff like that. I'm quick. Good questions to the point. Boom, out. All right. Um, I think yeah. I think Shaq Leonard trying to get more money. I mean, and that's who doesn't do that. That that's that. And I don't think that's the number one thing. Um, it, it's pro it, okay. It's probably not necessarily the most important thing for this year. But when you think about where where you're going to be next year and the year after that. Yeah, I think you are you're going to go to a team that can pay you well right now, but also give you the best opportunity for a bigger contract the next year and and who really wants them as a fit. Who who can see him playing 2 to 3 or 4 more years. So that that's where I think so money money is going to ultimately be a, the deciding factor, but it might not be the difference between this year and, and next year. So a team that says we don't have a ton of cap room now, we pay you this, but next year this opens up and, you know, we could sign you to a new deal and we think you could be this and that, that might, that might be something that he looks into. Um, the running game, I think is what he said. The, the, was it uh, the Cowboys running game against Seattle's defense. I hope that was right. I'm sorry. I was writing something down. I know you said running game. I'll just say both. How do I think the Cowboys running game against Seattle's defense? Uh, you know, Seattle's always going to have aggressive defense. Bobby Wagner th flies around there at linebacker. He's been doing it forever. Uh, Seattle, that that's kind of the MO we talked about for Seattle. They're, they're always going to have a, an aggressive type of front. But, you know, the Cowboys are going to stick to it. They are going to run the football. It helps with their, their play action, but it also, that's what they like to do. They feel like the more you can just keep doing that and, and, and pound the ball, that helps with the with the screens. That, that also helps, you know, loosen up to, you know, for them to play. 
the 12, 13 personnels that they do with the tight ends. If you're asking about the other side of the ball, too, I think Seattle, I think the last caller, Sebastian, kind of laid it out for you. know they, They're going to try to run it. They got Walker, who's been banged up. He may or may not play. Charbonnet's a, a, a young guy. You know he and he he runs he runs well, but that's not really what they do the best. I think they have they have three receivers that are um, they're the, they're the four only four teams in the league have three receivers with 400 receiving yards or more. So that just shows they have some weapons that they're not afraid to throw it around. That's probably what they do the best. And in a game like this, where if the Cowboys can get on a, get on them, then you know early, then I think Seattle's going to be forced to do that. So I don't know if the running game is going to be a huge factor for Seattle unless the Cowboys can get down early and Seattle has to try to run their way out. All right, let's go to the next caller, also Pete uh, from Dallas. So this this would be a repeat, I guess. Oh, sorry. I had to. Pete in Dallas, what's up? What's going on, Nick? This is actually P, like the letter C from Dallas. Oh, hey. P. Okay. My bad. No, good. All, all good. good. All good. What's up? I don't even want to ask yeah. you what it stands for. I'll just say P. What's up? It's all good. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll hear it a little bit, but... uh. I appreciate for what you do, first of all, man. You know, I, uh, I've been a fan. Actually, this is how I became a fan. I originally grew up in Ethiopia, which is East Africa. So when wow. I grew up, I grew up football as a soccer. Okay. So when I moved to Dallas, my brother-in-law, the first thing, the first Sunday I moved, after I moved here, he said, we're getting ready to watch football. I was thinking it was going to be soccer. Okay. So I sat down, grabbed my drink, and then he popped up. It was, uh, he turned on the TV with Cowboys playing the Giants, I believe. And I didn't understand what the hell going on. And I was like, All right, this is not for me. And then, well, 20 years from now, I'm a fanatic. So uh, that's listen awesome. to y'all. Yeah, I listen to y'all basically, what, about 14, 15 years now. Uh, did active duty for 15 years. So y'all put me through, your show put me through seven deployments. So that's... I just want to call and say, you know, I appreciate y'all. Y'all been a part of my uh, American culture, basically, since uh... the since, uh, I started becoming, I became a fan of the Cowboys. So I appreciate that. I that, is, say that. that is great. That is a great story. Thank yeah. you so much yeah, for, yeah, for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah like this is your first time to call, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, definitely right. the first time to call. Oh, thanks a lot, man. Hey, uh, I just want to call to say thank y'all. Happy holidays. All right. Uh, keep doing what y'all doing. And uh, I'll, I'll be listening again. All right. Thank you so much, Pete. Pete, I uh, really appreciate you you calling in. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's a first time caller. I, you know, I'll say I'll say this: the 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 little chime we've got there, the ding, that's going away. That's going away. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change it here next week. So uh, so if you if you're a first time caller today, you'll 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 still get it. But next week we're gonna we're gonna move it to something else, something a little more Cowboys themed. I think you, you'll like that. All right. We've got uh, another another uh, question here for the text line. Doc, he's from Allentown, Pennsylvania. He says, the 2023 draft has been disappointing. Schoonmaker looks like a deer in headlights. Uh, he wanted uh, Torrance, uh, the, the guard. Um my, he said, question is, is Mozzie Smith developing? Uh, he said, I love the pick of the time. But where is Fajoko? Too bad about Overshown. Thanks for a great show. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. All right. Um you know, I mean, it's it, yeah, it has it's been disappointing because you expect you expect the 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 class to, to be better. You you expect somebody in the class to kind of be a difference maker, um, and it hasn't happened. So let's just leave it at, at that because you know you can you can make some excuses here and there and say think about it. You know, and, and the reality of it is is that this has been a tough roster to make. I mean, this is a twelve and five team two years in a row. They're not picking at the top of the draft. And you know they, it's it's just difficult for these guys to beat out the guys in front of them. I mean, look at the last two years; those guys are still trying to figure out. Some of them are trying to get on the field and do some things. The Chauncey Golston's of the world, and and, and McQuamu, and and Nashawn Wright. I mean, it, it, it's it's not always working out for them. So, I mean, Kelvin Joseph was a second round pick, no longer here. So, you know, Sam Williams, he's he's made it known. He's trying to get more snaps and all that kind of stuff, too. So uh, it's just not it, – it's a good, talented roster, and it's not easy for these guys to come in and, and, and contribute right away and beat the guys in front of them. That being said, you still expect one, two, three guys to kind of be a difference maker, and it just hasn't happened. So uh, there's reason that you can be disappointed. It doesn't mean that, that they won't get to that point. 
And, you know, Schoonmaker, I think it's his eyes. I think it's just it's just the way he looks. He looks like a deer in headlights because that's that's the way he looks. I mean, um, but he's getting he's getting better. He's making plays, and the best thing about it is that Dak trusts him. He trusts him to make plays. He's going to keep throwing at him. If he's open, he's on the field. He's going to throw his way. Uh, we've seen it time and time again, and I think that'll only help him. Um, he's a good blocker now. He's a big, strong guy. Once he figures this out a little bit more, makes some catches, and get, maybe maybe builds even more confidence in himself. I think he's going to be a, a good player. I really do. Uh, Mozzie, same thing. Same, same thing. And Overshone, you know, it's too bad about the injury, but I think uh, he's a guy that, that will certainly help them down the road here. All right, let's go to the next caller. It's Dustin. He's in Waxahachie, Texas. Dustin, are you What's there? What's up, Nick? Hey, man, how are yes, you? Sir. Good, man. How about you? I'm great. Great. Thanks for calling you, you, today. Yeah, of course. Huge fan. Uh, obviously love your book. Love all the stories you tell. Thank you. Um, my, my number one player of all time is uh, hands down Tony Romo. It's not even close. Um, huge fan of his. Uh, I, I had actually season tickets uh, Dak's rookie year and almost sold them uh, when Romo got hurt in the preseason because I was like, man, that's it. And obviously it was a great run, uh, fun, you know, fun to see it happen. Good so, decision. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it ended up being a good decision. Still was kind of bummed uh, at the Green Bay game that they didn't didn't go back to Romo the way that game started. I just felt like he was poised and ready. But, hey, it is, it's, in the his, it's in the past. We can't do anything about it. So, right. I uh, had a really quick story for you and then just wanted to talk about the Cowboys' home field advantage. And so um, you mentioned uh, Dorsett and him kind of giving you a point at one point when you went to a game or yeah. – something back in the day i actually had a very similar experience um with emmett smith uh if you remember in the old texas stadium they had those bleachers that were in the end zone in front of uh the Mm -hmm. stands Mm -hmm. the actual stands and so i went with a church group one time to a game and uh we bought some tickets from someone outside the stadium and that's where they were but they were trying to sell us different tickets and so luckily i talked them into buying the tickets we sat there, I remember, is against the Falcons, and uh, Emmett Smith tor- scored a touchdown in the end zone. And, of course, a, you know, 10, 12, 13-year-old me, I don't know how old I was at that point, was screaming and pointing and pointing, and then he just gave me a head nod and a, a point, and uh, you would have thought God himself pointed at me that day. I was <laughs> uh, super pumped, so That's I definitely awesome. understand that feeling. Um, on the home field advantage front, um, I, I remember the first time I kind of saw it at AT&T, um, and it was actually in the Detroit Lions playoff game back in 2015. Um, it was it was super, um, I don't know, just boring at the stadium uh, once it was built. It just felt more like an entertainment venue and not really uh, a, a football venue. And uh, I think the first time I saw it at a game personally was at that Detroit playoff game uh, back in 2015. And I actually had the pleasure of uh, taking a flight and sitting beside an offensive lineman for the uh, Lions uh, the following season. And uh, I actually asked him about it, and he said, yeah, he goes, that, honestly, coming into the stadium, everybody called it Jerry's Wine and Cheese Party. Um, and he said, but when we walked onto that field, that day was just different. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. uh, I, I can just remember that because it was, and walking out of the stadium obviously was great. And then you've seen it, you know, periodic games, but definitely the last couple of years, it's been a huge, huge uh, change from what it was early on. And so it's great to see because um, that, that can make a difference in a season, uh, in standings and things like that. So uh, those Cowboys well, players need to, or fans need to keep showing up the way they are right now because it, it definitely helps. Yep, it definitely does. Dustin, is this your first time to call? It is. Sir. All right. We appreciate that for sure. Obviously gets the ding uh, for today. Thank you so much for telling those, those stories, and uh, and uh, we appreciate it. You got anything else? You, you got No, that's it, man. Let's go Cowboys. All right. All right. Good call. Thank you so much, Dustin. And, you know, about the, about the crowd um, and the experience, you know, Everybody gets a little bit of a, of some praise here. You know, the, the give credit to the fans. The fans, they've heard it. They know that. You know that they, they see other teams that, that come in here with a lot of you know fan base and all that with their jerseys. The Cowboys are now. I mean, you see a ton of Cowboys jerseys now. I mean, the fans are coming in. They're they're they're, they're proud of what they're you know their team. They're doing everything right. Uh, cheering at the right times, uh, for the most part, you know. Sometimes they'll throw a wave every now and again. The offense, but what, whatever they they they've done a really really good job of being, you know, the home field advantage. Give the Cowboys operations um, some some credit as well. You know, they they know this. They they see it, it's it's a it's a, a big deal to them. They I mean, some of those people in that crew. 
They go to other other stadiums, other teams, other arenas, and you know NBA. And all. They see what's happening. They see what fans how to engage with fans. So they they've done a really good job with that. Some of the music that they play, knowing that the fans will get involved, you hear that as as well. Give give credit to the the, the stadium operations part uh, the, uh, team of getting people in the stadium. You know, there's been some times where it was tough to, you know, there was a huge backup here and it took forever to get people in the stadium and all that kind of stuff. You don't see that anymore. We saw a noon game the other day where, I mean, they were going nuts. It was that Rams game at noon. And they they, they had, you know, they were probably 95% capacity at that point in noon and towels waving and everybody ready to go. And, and it was a difference maker right off the start. So I think everybody gets a little credit. And the team as well. The team is playing well at home. They're giving the fans something to cheer about. So all the way around, I think it's been really good. All right, we're going to take a break real quick on Cowboy Storyline. We'll be right back. We've got some more callers and text to read. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back to Cowboys Storyline. All right, back here on Cowboys Storyline. Let's go back to the callers. We've got, uh, we've got Brandon. He's in Fresno, California. Brandon, what's up? What's up, Nick? The five five nine man representing Deron Bland, baby. There you go. There you yeah, go. What an awesome story, too. When you think about where what happened with him, you know, like. He he never would have transferred to Fresno if it wasn't for COVID, right? Yeah. Are you familiar with that story? I mean, I, I kind of read a little bit the other day. Sacramento State weren't they weren't yeah. going to play football, and then he went to Fresno. Rest yeah, his- it was Sacramento, and then and then right at the end, that's when he switched over and played his last year over there at Fresno State. So, yeah, man, it's, yeah. it's awesome. To and the rest awesome. is NFL history, is what they I guess they would say. That's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome to hear the national media talk about Fresno, man. It's just it's just awesome. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, I wanted to throw a couple things out at you. Uh, bold prediction. Okay. Uh, flea, flea flicker. Oh. And I think it's going to be Cooks. It's going to be uh, Pollard. Flip back to Dak to Cooks in the end zone. So I wanted to give you that one. Yeah. Um, and then we finally got our speed guy, the one you've been talking about, Turpin, man. I think I think he's ready to go, man. He looks good. That seam up the middle. It's just, yeah. That, 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 he's just killing it, man. That he was just cool. Really is. Yeah. I, so, love- yeah, I think. I think they're listening to you. I think they're listening to the show, man. Hey, if they were listening to the show, they would run more flea flickers, obviously. If you guys know my stance on the flea flicker, I I would run one one a game. I really do. I have said it before. If I if people that are you know haven't heard that before, I think I would run it once a game. Um and you can say all you want to about well, they would be on to you if that happened. Cool. Let the safeties think that every time the running back has the ball, he might pitch it back. That that only helps you. I just I 
I just don't see why it would be that bad. Now you got to make sure you can get it blocked. If your offensive line's not very good, which this team is, I mean, they, they can block. But I mean, I I think it's it's something that should be used more. I just don't see. And I've asked offensive coaches. I've asked I've asked head coaches. I've asked play callers. They don't give me a really good answer of why they don't do it more. So if it happens in the game for the Cowboys and they score a touchdown. Twitter will break. It will break. My Twitter will break. It breaks every time somebody scores. If Rutgers does it against against you know Ohio State, it happens. And I get I get three or four text messages. I can't imagine or, or uh, tweets. I can't imagine what would happen in the Cowboy game if they scored a touchdown. And then last thing, I always throw a couple numbers. I don't know if you remember Dexter Coakley. Yeah. Through Greg Ellis. So uh, here we go. Uh, Brady James. And then just the name as a kid always stuck out, Ebenezer Ekibon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That name always stuck out to me. Oh, yeah. Uh, have, a good, have a good day, Nick, and uh, appreciate you, man. All right. Awesome. Thank you for the call. Yeah. Ebenezer Ekibon. That was my first d- draft that I covered for the Cowboys, I believe, uh, 99. Actually, that's not, not true. My first draft was 2000. Didn't have a pick. But uh, but 99 was my first season. He was a rookie that year, and uh, yeah, he was a he was a really really cool dude. Um, you know, he ended up playing. I think he played nine seasons in the league, um, because at least nine or ten. Because I know when we went to Denver in 2008 for um, a couple of days to practice with them, a bunch of fights. But um, Ebenezer uh, was there with the Broncos, you know, and at that, at that point, 98 um, or 2008. It was a, his tenth year, so he played at least ten years. Uh, good, good career, good solid career. Um, you know, he just he he was he wasn't you know what they needed him as a as a pass rusher. Um, they needed him to be a little bit better there, but for the most part, you know, good solid, good solid player, and great dude uh, for sure. Ebenezer Ekubon. Um All right, let's keep keep it rolling here. We got another uh, question. Oh, let's go let's go back to the phone line. We got Skyler. He's in Washington. <laughs> Skyler. Hey, Nick. How's it going? How are you doing? I don't sound like a, I head out of the car window today. It, it seems like the windows are cracked. I don't know if your head's out the window. I mean, you still kind of hear it, but it's okay, man. That's who. That's what you do. I appreciate you calling. So what, what do you got? Uh, so, one thing, Jesse Holly, if you're listening, this is the people show. <laughs> not, not the other show. Just, uh, that, I just want to get that out. You tell them. You tell them, Jesse Holly. I like. Uh, Appreciate that. So, I had I had this thought of did the Patriots from uh, the, like the last twenty years set a standard and an unrealistic uh, thought process for fans and thinking it's so easy to get to the Super Bowl consistently or the AFC Championship or NFC Championship as consistent as they did when Brady was still there. Uh, I just wanted to kind of hear your thought on that. I know we always have a high expectation of the Cowboys being the Super Bowl. And, well, fortunately, it has not happened in the time I've been a fan since 97. So, well, all right. And, uh, you know, we, we take a lot of flack as Cowboys fans because we're always, you know, touted so highly every year, even when we have a bad team. I hear you. Yeah. I mean, uh, th- thanks for the call. Um, you know, here, here's the thing about that. Like, you're right. Expectations are always there. But get there. I mean, I mean, like, the, yeah, you can't say that about the Patriots. But they've been to like eight or nine or something like that. I mean, they, they've been to a lot. And, and uh, you know, so, so, okay, that's unrealistic. The Patriots are unrealistic. But the Cardinals have gone to the Super Bowl, you know, and in, in, in the last I don't know 10, 12 years. I mean, they they they've made it, you know. The Saints finally got there; they won, you know. Falcons have made it, you know, almost won. Should have should have probably won, um, but didn't because of the Patriots. But I'm I'm just saying. So I, I hear what you're saying, but but you can't blame the fans for like you know you can't blame a a 27 year old Cowboy fan who has never seen his team in the NFC Championship game. I mean. Yeah, uh, you you know, especially the, these callers that call in like that. I mean, that's how invested they are. They're big time fans. They want this success. It's the greatest feeling in the world. It's the greatest feeling. Um, you know, you get to say we, yeah, because when I hate when people say that, like we, d- like w- did you really play? You're damn right. 
You damn right it's we. I, I you know think about how 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 much how invested these people are, these fans are. So your team finally gets to that point, win or lose. You know, because you feel bad when they lose, you feel great when they win. You just, damn right it's we. And uh, and so I I I fall somewhere in between. Expectations are high, but this fan base deserves to get there because they are they are. A, Big time fan bases is America's team, and you know they need to see their team get to that point. So I, I don't fault them at all for that. All right, let's go to a Pete in Connecticut again. This is a real repeat. We, are you you're calling back? This is the repeat, and uh, I've been a fan long enough. I'm 34 now, so when I was just a little kid, I saw Dallas actually win a couple Super Bowls. But um, I was wondering, my question is, do you think the curse will be lifted after getting Jimmy Johnson in the Ring of Honor because? Uh, a lot of these teams that we've seen go to the playoffs have had the worst ways they've lost coming from the mm-hmm. Des Bryant catch to the 2007 Giants loss. And, you know, I just feel like those are all curse type plays that we lost on. So I was just wondering what your thought was, Nick. All right. Thanks for right, the thanks for the call again. Um, now that's a first, I think, for the show. I, I don't believe we've Chris. We never had we never had a guy called two times in in, in one show. First time, uh, first time for for the second time yeah. for the for the first time for a second time. Whatever. All right, cool. Uh, Pete in Connecticut. That's awesome. You're the two two best calls we've had from Connecticut. I think right there. Um, but I don't. I don't. I don't buy into that. I'm sorry. I don't. I know this isn't the first time I've said that. I don't buy into the curse uh, from Jimmy Johnson. I just. I, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't think that way because, and I'll say it again, they've won a Super Bowl after him. They did. So no, I don't think that that's a curse of Jimmy Johnson. He left. They they didn't work out. Whatever it is, Jimmy Jerry, they, they just didn't. It didn't work out. So he didn't want to. He said it so many times. He's never really been at a place more than five years. Go back and look at his track record. That was his fifth year. He didn't stay in Miami. The University of Miami, not very long. He didn't stay at Oklahoma State before that very long. When he went to the Dolphins, he wasn't there. I mean, he doesn't stay. Now, Fox, I mean, how hard is that? I mean, he gets to go up there and, you know, and 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 be on the set and talk football, talk ball. I mean, it's a perfect job for, for him. That's why he's never left it. Um because you know, and he's and he's good at it. He's really good at it. But but I'm just, you know, I, I don't believe in the curse. I don't. I think the Cowboys just have not been good enough in all the ways that you have to be good and great and lucky and all that mix mixture. It just hasn't worked out. I don't think putting Jimmy Johnson's name in the Ring of Honor is going to change that. I I don't think that way. If the Cowboys get in this year, it's not going to be because of that. It's going to be because they finally made enough plays to do that. That's that's what I believe. If you guys believe differently. That that's fine. You know that's why I don't look at my horoscope. I don't. I don't necessarily believe in all that. Some people do. It's all good. If you do, you're not wrong. I don't think I'm wrong either. All right, Brian in Kansas City. Brian is next. What's up? Hey, good morning, Nick. How are you? Good sir? morning. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. <clears throat> I didn't get to listen to the first half hour, so if I repeat anything, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Um, this is a repeat show. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey. So, uh, are are you going to have Woody on now that now that he's on the list again? I'll have Woody on if he's on. He doesn't have to be on any list to have Darren Woodson come on. If he wants to come on, he can. Uh, I haven't asked him lately, but uh, we need to. I need to for sure. So uh, yeah, no, I, both both of and, and I wanted to point out. I, I loved. I didn't get to. I didn't get through that day. I tried, but I didn't get through that day. On Woody, but I got I got through when Nate Nate from Frisco was on, and. You know, going back, I don't know if you remember that call, but I asked him two questions. How many games would it take the offensive line mm-hmm. to gel? Joe. And he said three. Yeah, that's right. We, and then we asked him, I asked him, and then you asked him, was that smart for McCarthy to do that? I asked him, how long for a new offense to click? And he said, eight games. And you said, well, was it smart to do that? <laughs> Right, right. You know, so but no kidding. Looks like he was pretty much right on both. Yeah, and those are good questions by you. And also, didn't didn't you ask me the trivia? I'm still mad about the trivia question that I didn't get right about the well, was it so the now Steelers? I texted you. You were right about your answer. Woodson didn't start. Didn't start, did he? Yeah, but the starters, Dermani Dawson. I just, I you know. I, I barely know the, the, these linemen. I, I I didn't I didn't remember him as a as a Hall of Famer. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, great question though. Really, really yeah. was a, was a really good question. Um, I was trying to find one because you're so good with the with the history and the trivia stuff. And yeah, and, and, I, and I'm still mad because my mom told me I couldn't that that being a Cowboys fan wasn't a job, and I didn't get anywhere with it. Well. It's not, it's, it's not, I mean, I got, I got very lucky. I I mean, think about it. I mean, who, who gets to be at, you know, in their senior year of college, the Dallas Cowboys just show up and say, Hey, we, we, we're going to have a training camp here. You guys need it. You guys have any, you know, any, anybody that wants to be a writer? I mean, like, come on. I mean, it was just, it was, it's, it's so lucky. And that's why, yeah, I mean, that's, and I've 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 done that. I've I've talked to to kids in schools before. Um, you know, they ask questions. How can I do that? And I'm just like you. You know, you have to just be prepared when when your opportunity comes. I'm I'm not going to say that the New York Yankees are going to just show up at your door and say, "Hey, you guys need a, you, you you know you need a writer." Doesn't work that way. But uh, you just have to be prepared for it. And I. I I think I was, I, you know, and because I was preparing my whole life for this, I was preparing my whole life for this. You know, I mean, I knew I didn't know anything about social studies and all that stuff. I knew Garth Jax was a linebacker in the eighty. I knew him. You know, I mean, that's that's the thing. He's got the coolest name too. I mean, all name team Garth Jax as a linebacker. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So absolutely. Hey, so I got a I got two more things for you. Okay. So I was not terribly upset that we didn't sign. Leonard before he left. Yeah. I, you know, there's, there's good and bad to everything. And, you know, for whatever reason, Jerry's not returning my calls. So I don't know, was it money or was yeah. it medical? Yeah. Right? So, you know, or, or some combination thereof or, or just fit, but you know, there's good and bad. Everybody, you know, at, at the trade deadline, we kind of heard the same thing. You know, everybody wants to make a deal, make a deal. Not all deals work out, right? We paid Taco Charlton a ton of money to not play for us. We yeah. paid, uh, what's his name? That's, yeah, yeah, I think he's still playing for the Giants, the linebacker, Smith. Yeah, uh, Jalen. I don't know if he's still in the league, but yeah. I thought he was still in the league this year. Maybe. But, I don't and know. then we got one that isn't. We're paying somebody this year $8 million. He's not in the league. Yeah. You know, so not all deals, you know, not all deals work out. And maybe there was something there. Maybe there was a reason not to sign them. So, you know, I, I do understand that, you know, LV went down. There's a hole there. We'd like to fill it. Maybe there just wasn't a fit there. And then well, the other thing. Go, go okay. Ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll answer that in a second. Okay, sure. And then the last one I had was, you know, we never, I, I've never heard anybody ask you for a story of one of the guys that works there. So I was thinking maybe you'd come up with a good Barry Church story. Barry Church. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Yeah. I'll hang, I'll All hang right. up, man. Have a good day. Got a good one. All right. Here's the thing about, about Shaq Leonard um, that, you know, he, if he's going to make more money, he, he needs to leave. I mean, he needs to leave the, the building. Go to a rival. Go to a team that has a better record. You know, he can get more money maybe with Philly because he was with Dallas. He can get more money with Dallas because he went to Philly or go to another team. If you just sit here and sign, I mean, the Cowboys would have to throw a boatload of money at him. And I don't think that's that's where he is in his career. It's got to be the right fit. But he also understands. His agent knows, hey, in order to make this the right way, we're going to have to get a little bit more money here. Uh, we're going to have to you know, show that there's more interest. Whether or not he might have loved this visit, said, oh, I'm signing here. Let me go do what I need to do. Maybe get a few more bucks out of it. But, I mean, I think this is all part of the process. Barry Church. Um, when Barry Church signed as a, as a free agent, I remember thinking, this guy's making the team. Rookie free agent, he's making the team. When I saw four-year first-team all-MAC performer, I mean, that's they have good football. They play good football in the MAC at Toledo, and he was first team uh, safety. Case his forty wasn't the fastest. Uh, cool, good, good, solid player. Very smart player. I knew he was going to make this team. Funny story out of Barry Church though is when he at training camp he missed practice because he had like a a tooth um, injury, I guess, or I don't want to say it was a tooth thing. It was like w- way worse than than that. Uh, and he, he missed practice with a lot of pain, and I don't know what he had, he had eaten or whatever, but the the company, the uh, Candy Peeps, you know what I'm talking about, the little marshmallows, they sent, they just didn't send a box. They sent a crate, like a pallet of Peeps. I mean, millions of Peeps, and this huge pallet to give to him to say, hey, I want you to have softer candy. I think he sent it back. He didn't want any part of that. But, you know, so, and then they... 
That, that That's my Barry Church story. All right, we got one more caller. We got to get in real quick. Steve in, in New York. Steve, what's up? What's up, pal? Um, just real quick, I, I want to vent, but I just want to say the uh, first Thursday night game, I'm going to show my age here. I, I remember as like a nine year old kid, uh, 1978. So you could check that, but um, um, I think they lost that game to the Vikings. I remember watching it though, uh, as a kid. Just my quick vent. I know some people are going to get ticked off about this. I just want to preface it by saying I hope these guys make the most money that they can. I yeah. get it. All right. No, listen, the NFL players compared to uh, baseball, they're not to say underpaid, but no guarantee contracts. I hope these guys make as much as they can. With that said, I do not want to talk about awards, MVPs, defensive player of the year. Listen, there's one thing we want to do. There's one award slash trophy I'm interested in. And I think we all are. I just, I don't like all the talk about personal accolades. They're great. I get it. Pro Bowl. Yeah, I'm going to vote once and that's going to be the end of it. But let's win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I hear I hear your point. Uh, I'll say this, though. To me, I always tell people, enjoy the ride. Enjoy this thing. Because you don't win the Super Bowl in November or, or even in December. So I, I like the records. I like the game. This is the first game that this happened. This is the first time this happened. Because that's how I stay in the moment. I, that's how I stay in there. I, if, I, if I just think, oh, cool, good win, but do they win the Super Bowl? Then you're then you're just you're you're not enjoying the ride. Think about think about April and May. How fun is that? It's not because it's not football season. And we, we we wait so long to get to football season, and then we get to football season and we don't enjoy it because we're sitting here thinking, Wow, well, I gotta win the Super Bowl, gotta win the playoffs. Good win. Good job, Dak. But what happens in the playoffs? We'll see. But let's that's why the games like Deron Bland getting this record and this record and all that, that is what keeps me focus every single week. Let's enjoy the Seattle game for what it is. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it'll be something cool we haven't seen, but but I mean they're not going to make the playoffs after this game, win or lose, they're not. But I that's how I, I stay in it. I'm not telling anyone how to be a fan if it's all about Super Bowl. I I get it, but to me it takes a little bit of the fun out when you're talking about the draft next year, you're talking about the Super Bowl. Let's let's talk about Thursday night. Speaking of, and the last thing I'll say is you were dead on the money, Steve, when you said 1978, first Thursday game that wasn't Thanksgiving. They played Minnesota. They lost. 1978, lost 21 to 10. But you're right about that. That is the first Thursday night game. I didn't know that. They played 10 times on Thursday that was not uh, a Thanksgiving Day game. All right, we got to get out of here. Cowboys break's coming in. Uh, for Chris Beam, I'm Nick Even. We will see you Monday. Maybe a different time. We'll, we'll figure that out. May have a little bit longer show on Monday, but we will let you know about that when we will. That, that, that's not true. We're going to be back here Friday. Uh, right after the game. So our next show will be Friday, 10 a.m. regular time. Uh, but the, uh, we've got Cowboys break coming up right now. We will see you on Friday. See you. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?